Hello everyone and welcome to the Hammer Podcast. But before I begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the videos, share them with your friends, and please comment. It helps this channel out a great deal. Thank you. Today is April 25th, 2020, and we are talking to Barb. Barb attended the Rebecca Home for Girls in Corpus Christi in the middle to late 70s. Now there were a few split-second cutoffs every now and then because of internet problems, but the quality is good overall. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's listen to Barb's story. Okay, when I was about 11, 12 years old, I became a ward of the state um, from my home life. I got removed from my home. Okay. I was in many foster homes, and I was in two state homes, and I was in a couple group homes. When I was 13, I got put into juvenile detention, jail, jail, like a real jail. Okay. And um, um, we went to court. We went to court, and I remember going to the courtroom. My stepdad was there. My mom, Jerry, a guy from my mom's church was there. And they, we, I was there, you know, and the lawyers and stuff. I, I remember that. And they asked the judge. They said that they got me accepted into a girl's home in Corpus Christi, Texas, and asked the judge for permission for me to go. What so year? The judge gave me permit. What year was that? Um, I was 13 years. I was 13, 1976. Okay. And the judge gave him permission to take me. Within hours, I was removed with handcuffs. Oh. Now, I didn't do nothing wrong. I wasn't a bad kid. I just had a bad childhood. Um, so... I, they took me to the airport, and I was put on a plane, fl- flown. He- not They took the cuffs off when we got to the airport. I remember that when I got on the plane. I was flown to Corpus Christi, Texas. There is no way my mother could have flown me. We had no money. Um, half the time we didn't have lights or food, you know. Mm-hmm. And so there is no way my mother could have ever afford, afford to get me there. I don't know how I got there. But I remember Miss Lee came and picked me up. Miss was one of the workers in the home. She was a sweet, kind, loving woman. Woman, There was nothing bad I could ever say about her. She came and picked me up. We seemed like we drove forever. And when I got there, I remember seeing the church, the big dorm, Rebecca dorm. Then there was the little room one next door. That was the Jubilee house. Right. Still, Jubilee. And um, I'll never forget it. I mean, when we first got there, when you opened up and you went in, it was beautiful. It was a long hallway. It was almost brand new. I mean, I got there in 76. I think they built the dorm in 73 or 74. And it's still brand new. It was beautiful. Everything was shining. You look down the hall. You seen the piano, the living area, you know, the office and, the, and stuff. And But I didn't know when I, they shut their door. I never dreamed that I wouldn't see my home or my family again for three years. I didn't know that. Three years. And um, wow, three. I was there almost three years. I, I left May twenty eighth, nineteen seventy nine. So when I, you know, at first it was like a safe haven. You know, all the all the stuff I've been through. I'm like, oh my god, I'm safe. We've got. I remember going to the office. They went through the luggage, and you know, they just picked out what I could have and what I couldn't have. You know, and then got our uniforms and. You know, because we wore uniforms back then. Right. And we got our uniforms. And we had, a, like, a footlocker. Every girl had a footlocker that we kept with us, that we kept our personal stuff in, and it went in the closet. So they told me down the, there's two halls, um, up, downstairs and upstairs on each side. It, I went to my room. In the, in the room, there's three twin beds with a nightstand. Everything's new, you know, pretty much. Uh, we all had Jack and, Jill, Jack and Jill bathrooms, which was connected to another room what we called bathroom mates. So there was like six girls to a little area. And um, Mr. and Mrs. Mills was there. The Camerons wasn't even there yet. I was there before the Camerons. Okay. Even. So I remember the day that Mrs. K- Mr. and Mrs. Cameron even came in. Everything seemed pretty good. I'm kind of happy until we went to dinner that night. This is probably the only meal I can really remember, remember. This is the very first meal. So we went to dinner that night, and at that time, it was still behind the Jubilee. This is before the cafeteria was built. So we walked through the breezeway, 
um, like Fr- Freedom's Last Call, where you see the li- girls in line there. Yes. I think you got a picture of it. Uh-huh. That's when we was in line. That's the old kitchen where we were in line for dinner. Okay. But that's the old kitchen. And we went to eat. And they, I don't know if you, if you know what, that carrot salad. Remember carrot salad that had the raisins? Yes. And oh, sometimes you get it after when you go to a buffet. They put a scoop of that on my plate. I'm thinking, okay, where's the food? But that was it. <laughs> That was it. <laughs> that was it. That was it. I ain't going to say that I didn't go to bed hungry because I went to bed hungry many nights. But at the same time, we didn't starve either. We had, you know, three meals Monday through Friday. You know, on Saturday, we only had two meals. And Sunday, we only had the fruit truck. We didn't eat food on Sunday. We only got a fruit truck. Mr. Cameron, eventually, we got a semi. It was like a semi he would back in. Whatever it was in it, we could eat as much as we want. Wow. You know, it could be watermelons. It could have been oranges. It could have been apples. But that would be all we ate on Sundays. You know, you know and stuff. So Mr. and Mrs. Mays left, and all of us girls got called. We was, like, down in the front area, the living area uh-huh. one day, and uh, the Camerons came in. I never, Mr. Mrs. Cameron, she was a small lady, about five foot tall. You know, 100 pounds, a little lady. And then there was Mr. Cameron. Now, because stuff didn't happen to me, don't mean it didn't happen to other girls. Don't get me wrong. Right. That my Rebecca girls say, you know. Uh And if you read, if I've never spoke out, but I read a lot. All the girls that were in their 70s, we pretty much, they pretty much tell the same story, but maybe a little different. And if you can get 400, 600 girls saying the same story, it's probably true. But, you know, so the, we Camerons came in. Now, Mrs. Cameron, I've, I've heard a lot. I can say Mrs. Cameron, I have never heard her raise her voice to no girl. I don't even miss, remember Miss Cameron giving licks. But Mr. Cameron gave the licks. Oh. But this was before Mr. Roloff died. So Mr. Roloff was still in charge. Then Mr. Cameron ran the house, and Mrs. Cameron was, a, like, the lady of the house. Later on, it went to where Mr. when Mr. Roloff died, Mr. Cameron came in charge, and then Mrs. Cameron kind of stepped up. And I guess that from what I'm assuming and what I'm reading, that's when it really got kind of crazy. Okay. But while I was there, you know, it was, I ain't going to say it wasn't crazy because it was. But just through the things in life that would happen to me, I cut my wrist. I cut my wrist bad. I wear bad scars because we didn't get no medical attention. You know, I don't ever remember no, nobody ever going to the doctor, ever, you know. Right. Um, so, I got, so I cut my wrist, and like I said, I wear very ugly scars from it to this day. And um, I went to lockup. They put me in lockup. I, I don't know how long I stayed in lockup. My, my arms were kind of healed. And so I was probably in there for a, a little minute. Lock up. The lock up room is when you go down, when you come in, you go down to the left, to the left hall, the first room on the right is a lock up room. In that room is a bed and a toilet, nothing else. And, you know, we did have the intercom systems where, you know, they play, played the music, you know, through the day. I don't remember playing all night, but through the day and or to hear the sermons. So I sat there, and I had to listen to that over and over and over. Okay. And um, I finally, Miss Cameron came in. She told me that I, that I would talk to me. We prayed, you know. I, you always had to pray. So we prayed, and they told me they were going to let me go to my room. So, and I get dressed and grab my P.E. outfit, which we all know what the P.E. outfit was. Those, those, so I grabbed my P.E. outfit. Was it those ugly so culottes? I went to the office. Yeah, the two <laughs> So I grabbed them. <laughs> so I grabbed them, and I went to the office, like she said. And she was walking me to the front door. I'm thinking, oh, right? I mean, that's what you automatic think, you know, because you didn't leave. I mean, you know, we had a six-foot fence around us, barbed wire on it. You couldn't go nowhere. And all these people saying, oh, you could run, you can run. We were little children. We were 13 years old on a 400-acre farm out in the middle of nowhere, halfway across the United States where we didn't even know where we were, you know? Right. So running was a scary thought back then. So I got to the door and I opened it up, and Mr. Roloff was there. 
He says, you want to go fishing? Huh. I says, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, you know. So me and another girl, we went with him on the Liberty Bell. I flew to a, a, a little island, I think. I don't know where I, you know, now I, I've never been to Texas, so I don't know where I'm at. But there was a little island. There was like a little, couple little cabins on this island. Then, you know, he had his where the airplane landed. And I, I remember I couldn't go swimming. The other couple of girls got to go swimming and stuff because I still have bandages on my arm. Okay. And um, so, you know, but I got to wade in the water and stuff. That's one time I did get to eat fish. All this, we got all the fish we could eat. I don't remember fish that much. I thought three years. So, um, you know, so I'm at this little island. They're, we're running around. I see everybody's really, you know, it's like normal. And Mr. Roloff came out down on the edge of the water. He took off his socks and his shoes and rolled up his pants. He went for a walk with me, men at home. And he's about the first person that ever asked me really how I got there and what happened. So, you know, I was talking to him and stuff. And he told me, he looked at me right in my eyes. He said, if I can save, go to jail and save one little girl like I can save you. He said, I will go back to jail, you know. Because I can't say it was good, but it was the lesser of two evils. You know, if yes. I had a choice of getting SWAT or licks, I'd rather take them in the beatings I was getting. You know, right. And other girls don't understand that because they were ripped from good homes. I wouldn't say ripped, but they were sent from good homes. Maybe because they were, their mom was religious and they didn't want to wear the pants or the skirts or whatever. So they really didn't live the life I lived of a, a mixed up hurt child. Most there was, you know, I can't take that back or nothing, but he, you know, and I, I believed him. You know, I mean, I believe he was a, a secure man that really loved us girls and was trying to help us. And then the next day we flew back and I was back, quicking back in the home. And I, only time, other times I really left the home is I went with Mr. Roloff to Austin to the Capitol or Dallas. I went to Dallas or Austin with them. We went into, you know, the, the Capitol, I remember. We all went in there. There's pictures. When I watch YouTube, like everybody's watching YouTube, see, I, don't, I already don't know what they're saying. I'm looking in the background to see if I see me or my friends, <laughs> you know, because I was there, you know. Right. So, you know, but, you know, it's it was pretty crazy. Now that I think about it, we walked into the Capitol. This man's in the middle of the Capitol preaching. All my friends are singing. So if it was so bad, a girl, why didn't you yell for help? You're right there with the state representatives because there was many there. You know, there was right. security guards there. There was news people there. You know what I mean? So if you all these, and it was so horrible, why didn't you ask for help then? Maybe they were afraid. You know, that's the, afraid? We wasn't nothing to be afraid of then. See, that's the whole thing. It all changed after they came back in 79. I mean, the stuff that I read... Like in the 80s, you know, that I read the court papers. I mean, I've looked up and done some researches. Uh -huh. Some of that stuff I just can't believe happened. I mean, I ain't saying it didn't happen because it happened, you know, but I can't have pictured in my head happening at the time I was there. So it had to happen after Mr. Roloff died. Mr. Roloff, yes. We went to church every Sunday, Sunday night, Wednesday night. We had Bible studies, you know, everything was based around the King James Version. We went to the ACL. E schools, which we did take sewing, home ec, typing. Um, what else did we take? Um, Bible Bible studies and stuff. And to me, I looked at it as a blessing because I was moved in so many foster homes. I was so far behind in school. See, in the ACE school, you did twelve paces and you got your one year school credit. So I I could I put my I guess my my being alone and scared into school. So I, I got two years of school caught up in one. Oh, okay. Then the next year I did regular school, you know. Right. But it didn't end up good because when I did get out in 79, I was a junior in high school, which I was going to go in my senior year when I got out. And when I went to the public school, they wouldn't accept some of the ACE school credits. So now I'm still another year behind. Mm. Because, you know, the state, state and religion... They didn't accept, like, the Bible credit and stuff like that, so I was still behind. Yeah. But then I hear a lot of the 
questions that people keep asking over and over and things that happen. Like, you know, the girl that jumped out the window. What happened was, the, you know, the best of my knowledge, we had alarms on our windows. When she jumped out, the story, now the rumor was when she jumped out, because we'd never seen her again, but the alarms went off. When the alarms go off, you all know, to go, you, you know, we're going, getting locked down, whatever you want to call it. But she jumped out the window and she broke her leg. Hmm. Now, that must be one time that they had to get medical help. So they broke her legs, and shortly after that, they came in and started closing the windows. The windows never opened again after that. Oh, okay. You know, they were locked. So, you know, which, you know, we had air condition, but still, the only time we went outside, you know, was when we went to the school or we got to go on the weekends. You know, we got to sit outside sometimes Saturday. You know, they played ball and stuff. Uh-huh. But, you know, but, you know we, we mainly stayed in. And we had to be careful what we said, you know, because there was the intercom system. And, and if you know, we didn't say something right, you know, we did get licks. Oh. I remember the worst licks I ever got was over the piano. The girl came in. She was, she was one of my friends, too. She was from Tempe, Arizona. She could play the piano beautiful, played it all the time. So we was up there, you know, they let us out because she played piano. All of a sudden, I hear her playing this little tune. I'm thinking, boy, I know that tune, right? <laughs> it, you know, it right. takes me a minute. And it was, I don't know if you know the song, but it's Jesus is All Right With Me by the Doobie Brothers. Yes, yes, I know that song. So, so every once in a while, we get that Jesus is All Right With Me. And um, well, when they found out that was a rock and roll song, oh, we got to, we got into trouble. I remember, I remember, you know, I was skinny, I was little. I remember I, did, I tried to take a shower, I couldn't, it hurt. So I put up the toilet lid, and I put my butt in the toilet to cool it, you know, for the yeah. oozing and the sand, the cold water, to try to heal, heal it. Um, it was a pretty good swatch that time. Ooh. There, You know, we did get swats quite often for crazy things. Meeting on the ice. I don't know if anybody knows, if you went to church... Meeting of the eyes, we got in trouble a lot for that. Now, when you went into the church, on the right is, is the girls. I think the town people is the middle, and the left was the boys. But if you got caught looking too too long to the left, then they automatically thought you was looking at a boy. Oh, yeah. That's called meeting of the eyes. That was forbidden. You know, that was forbidden. Yes. You, so you try not to look, you know, to the left. <laughs> or, you know, you, you, you know, we were teenage girls at that time. You know what I'm saying? Right. If they were teenage boys. You couldn't help it. You could giggle and laugh. You know, That's, it's just nature. Yes, it is. But, but that, that was forbidden. And a lot of girls got punished for that. Then you hear the story about, oh, we stood for 10 hours. I don't know if it was 10 hours because it felt like three days to me. <clears throat> if it was a long time. A girl came in, they let her bring in a bird. Now, we went, it's kind of funny now, but it wasn't funny then. But when we left, I don't know if we went to school, to church, to eat, whatever. All, we got back, all hell broke out. Everybody had to get out of their rooms because they're in the hallway. So somebody hung her bird and wrote a suicide note. Oh. And um, they wanted to know who. Nobody was going to confess. I don't know how long we stood. We stood. And I watched girls pass out. I leaned on the wall a couple of times, got in trouble. I mean, some people said it was 10 hours. Like I said, it felt like days. When they couldn't stand no more, they made us kneel until we couldn't take it no more. Eventually, somebody did confess, and it was over. But, you know, it, that was a pretty crazy moment there. Too. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Did, did they make you? Did they, did they ever make you kneel on rice? I don't remember the rice, but I hear many girls say that. Yes. You know, but I don't remember, and I can't say that. You know, they're lying because certain things. I know this sounds crazy, and a lot you hear this in a lot of the testimonies. We don't remember a lot. Remember bits and pieces of things, and sometimes it comes together. You know more. Right. If that makes any sense. Yes. I was I was there during the stabbing. Um, all these girls that want to claim, oh, I shut Rebecca down. No, you didn't. You know, Rebecca's still up and going in different states and different names. You know, 
But who really brought it down was a, well, she's passed now, but the girl named, what's her name? She was 17 years old. And four other girls, or five girls, went, now there's rumors that it was scissors from the sewing room or a knife from the kitchen. Whatever it was, they had it. A new girl came in, and um, I ain't going to say her name because she's the victim. But okay. she came in. She was a little bigger bigger and slower type of girl, you know, uh-huh. I, I guess. She was a, just, I, I guess, an easy pick for them. And they did indeed stab her five times in the back. Now, besides them getting medical attention, they sent called the girl's mother, and the girl's mother came and picked her up. The girl's mother took her for medical attention, which led into a police report. And, you know, that's when the state really, that was in late 78. This, so in, by the late 79, you know, it was really getting bad. I mean, the reporters would be outside on the blacktop, you, the reporters would zoom in, you know. We look right. up, and, of course, we're running to the fence. So, you know, there's the news reporters and stuff. All girls, you know, we're teenagers. We run to the fence. We would always get in trouble for that, too. But, you know, it's just, you know, and they would. I, one reporter was always there making comments. I remember that. But still to this day, now, I mean, the girl's mother, you know, pressed charges. Now, they wanted to come in and get the girls. The police, DCFS, and the state. Brother Roloff would not. He refused and stood his ground. He never turned them girls over, which was a big ordeal. But, you know, which is probably lucky because 17 in the state of Texas would have, been, would have been an attempted murder charge. That would have been a serious thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, she was, and she was just a mixed-up kid, too, in a place just trying to get home, which, you know, that's what these other parents need to know. No matter what you put your kids in a home, these people will never love your child as much as you love your child. That, that is true. You know? That is true. So is true. you got to remember that. But, you know, that was their plan was try to get home. Besides that, she came Brother Roloff's pet. She played basketball with them. We could be going to school and stuff. We'd be out watching her play basketball, play tennis, ride bicycles with them. I mean, they just came best friends. And so he made a, a film. There was four films, three I watched personally, I seen with my own eyes. Brother Roloff made four films of us in the home. So these films, if you really want to know the truth and how he was, where are these films? But he got, made the fourth film. He had the girls up there, and he called them. These are my little murderers. <laughs> this is how that saying came about. My little murderers. I, I got a, he uh, changed their life. He made them, you know were Christians. No, these were little girls that were scared, you know, at this point, because they were in big trouble. But that's where that little saying came from. But she did not get no medical attention there. And the report that I read says she was stabbed five times in the back, and one was very close to her heart. If it, you know, if it would have went over a little bit more, she probably wouldn't have made it. You'd probably go upstairs to this day. If they change the carpet, pull it back, you'll find her DNA because it was a very bloody scene. I'm amazed she wasn't paralyzed. You know? She wasn't dead. Yeah. You know, it was close to the heart. She's lucky. Now, I mean, she's got to live with those scars. I mean, she probably wasn't there a week or two. You know, you just don't know. You know, putting your child in one of these homes, you don't know what the other children's problems are. You know, there's mixed up kids there. There's hurt kids. There's, you know, kids that are looking for love. There's abused kids. You know, there's many kids and different attitudes there. You, you know, and some of you're them, putting your kid in date. And, and some of them are just plain nuts. <laughs> you know. That too, you know, <laughs> that needed help, you know. So, you know, that really, that was a true thing that happened. Now, we had, we had one the, girl, we had one girl say, uh, her name was Cindy, I don't know if you heard the podcast, but she said that they were making them take vitamins, and they were making them drink milk that tasted like onions, and the girls never got their cycle. You know, now we have, a, we have two pages, one is kind of open, and another one's private. And believe it or not, 
a lot of women. See, when here lately, a lot of girls, the, the newer type girls are being added on. You know, the old time girls, we've been on it for years. Okay. But, you know, a lot of them, and, and this is where I started getting confused because I started seeing these days got closed in 1979. You know, maybe it's because in my mind, when I left, I thought it was closed. You know, I don't know. Um, so I was getting confused, but everybody kept saying that. So I called my daughter. I'm like, on this page, they're saying that we didn't have our monthly. She's like, well, did you, Mom? be honest, I don't remember. I don't think so. And, and you know, how do you stop 400 girls' monthlies at one time? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> you know, that's some, and I think that that's seriously because at the age of 21, I had a hysterectomy. I got very sick. Did they, what, what did they put in, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. I ain't saying it was that. Don't get me wrong. Right. But what if there w was some type of chemical? I mean, because now even later years on through here, these girls are still saying this. You know? Right. Now, the warm onion type milk, that was goat's milk. We had it every, We had it a lot. And sometimes it was warm and it was goat's milk. Okay. You know? That, that's all we had. And, um... But I don't know where they, because they, now another girl said peanut butter. Now, peanut butter, that's one of our good memories, because on Wednesday night, that's what we got to eat, a peanut butter sandwich and a banana. Ooh. But it was homemade peanut butter. Okay. But I heard, you know, I remember them saying they sold it in a little, like, gift shop. So I can't see them putting it in that, because that would hurt other people. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I don't know. I don't still do this. Still to now, that's a, a mystery to me and a puzzle, and I don't know. And I can't say I remember because I don't, but I really don't think none of us did. I keep remembering saying they, uh, they told us stress. No, this is because of stress, stress. You know, we was young. We didn't know. We probably believed it. You know, then uh, we now, this, this is where we're sending the Bethesda home. Now, right, right. this was really, this, now this is what, hurting and upsetting me more than anything on my experience. There was a girl that came in. She was my bathroom mate. I can't think of her name. She had brownish hair. And she was there a couple of weeks and all of a sudden she's in lockup. Nobody knows why. Now the rumor, you know, people, you know, we're, everybody's got to and talking. She's pregnant. And um, next thing you know, she's gone. But she came back months later. And the only thing she did was cry. And cry. I mean, she cried a lot. And, she, and she, uh, the, what I'm understanding was she said that it, her parents said she had to give up her baby. But she didn't want to. But yet she was a minor. So they sent her to Bethesda. The baby was pulled up for adoption. Now, um, there's many women looking for their children. You know, why wasn't their records kept? If there was records kept, why can't you release them to these girls that their child, children were taken or put up for adoption? You know, they were children. They made mistakes. They had babies. They don't have memories of having these babies, some of them. You know? Right. Where are these records? They're probably... What right did anybody have to come take someone's baby from them? And sign papers on the, a trunk of a car at a hotel, because that's one girl's story. Yes. You know, doing this or doing that, being in labor for hours, screaming in a home. What right? You wasn't God. What right did you have to do that? They had no you know? right at all. No right whatsoever. Right. And these mothers are still looking for their children. There's DNA, you know, now going on. Some have been reunited. And many haven't because they don't know. And some of these children might not even know they're adopted because they're in a Christian home. And they're probably raised that they didn't even know they were even adopted. And speaking of you that, know what I'm saying? speaking of that, Barb, I think maybe that they were given these kids, and I'm just guessing here, but I think some of them were given to some of the congregation at the People's Baptist Church to raise. Some of the people at the farm, some of the people from the church, you know what I mean? To raise them. I, I just know they were put in Christian homes. You know, that's their, that was their main thing. They said it was best for the children. They were put in Christian homes. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. But I know there's a lot of mothers out here looking. And it really, what, you know, I put a lot of this behind me. Dr. Phil opened that can of worm when he put the ha habitus, 
house, whatever you pronounce it. Yes. You know, I had no idea these homes were still going. You know, well, they are. it just put me in shock. I ain't kidding you, it put me in shock. So then there was a picture one time of Jetson on our page. He said he gave uh, plenty, he caught plenty of fish for us girls or something. The next thing I know, all hell broke out on the page because they're saying he was an abuser. Now, he's saying he's from the roll-off home. I don't know. So I Googled him just out of curiosity because I never, I don't know who Jack is. There's just a bunch of commotion on my page. This man claims to be a disciple of Lester Roloff. Okay. Okay. And I don't, I think he was in Alabama, maybe it was, and he started a home. Now, he, he went to jail, too. He's, I think he's passed now, but he did go to jail. And when they came, I think they got 40 kids off, out of his home. He was caught with cuffs, shackles, and guns. Oh. So let me tell you, so the way it used to be in the 70s, it ain't that way now. You know, if you're thinking about putting your child in one of these homes, why would you put your child in care of a grown man in the first place? Your daughter. You know, yes. you don't, and, uh, what, because they say they're a man of God. Do you know they're a man of God, that you would send a teenage daughter to a man? Yeah, there's no telling, you know? well, you have to check his past. I mean, they probably didn't know what this, he could have been a sex offender for all they knew. You know what I mean? Right. Now that, and another girl got on my page, on our page, and one time I, I said something, and she said, um, I was a burden. God put a burden on my heart to come take care of you girls. Hold it here. Take care of us. We were behind six foot fence with barbed wires. We didn't talk to our. I didn't talk to my parents. My parents. My mom didn't have money for a phone. She didn't have money for a six month visit. I didn't talk to. I think I talked to my mom once and my grandma once in three years. Oh. You know, you ripped me from my family. You know, no. Yeah. It, it wasn't like that. And a lot of girls that did go on their six months visit, they went home. <laughs> a lot of parents did remove their child, you know, when they come from their six months visit. Some didn't. But, you know, the, it, I ain't saying it was a bad place. It was the lesser of two evils for me. Because I was in state homes. I could pair them, you know. And, and, and believe it or not, there are a lot alike. The only thing different... You know, back then you got you got SWAT still in school. It was the seventies. You still saying the Pledge of Allegiance. You got SWAT in schools. You got SWAT in the state home. You got kind of a, more SWAT in the Rebecca home. You know. Well, the only the only difference I can see between the state homes and the um, Rebecca home or Christian homes is that a lot of the people from the secular homes were vetted they were they had background checks on them so you pretty much knew what their past was uh and like you right. said and like you said with the christian homes well god gave me a burden well you're not accredited with any organization so you're just going to say god did it god said i could and now you're going to all of a sudden be a teacher and a mentor to these girls right that's ridiculous. i mean who are you 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 ain't trained you know right you're there was trained. nobody there to handle me and my past. Nobody came, not one person, except that day was what, none of them know my past, the hurt I was through, the abuse I was through. Nobody could know how to counsel me and help me through the, the nightmares I was having. You know what I'm saying? Right. They didn't have nobody trained there to help me or no other girl there. You, you know? It, and I ain't saying it was right or wrong, but you can't pour, force beliefs on somebody because you believe... A Baptist, a fundamental Baptist of the King James Version, is the way of life. Catholics believe their way of life. Nazarenes believe their way of life. You can't force nobody to be a Christian. And they crammed it down our throats. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, and, you know, people want to get in there and start, you know, their Bible scriptures or preach. Hold it here. We know the Bible. We know the Bible better than anybody. We memorize the damn Bible <laughs> by chapters. You know, Definitely. and believe me, we were kids. So anything they gave us a verse that said, oh, this and that. We found a verse that said, oh, here's another verse that said, uh uh, this ain't true. You know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> because, I've, you know, they put it in our heads so much. I've always heard if you want to defunct the Bible, just read the Bible. <laughs> it, it. Right. <laughs> but you see, but if we memorize these chapters, see, we got privileges. 
So I was one of the girls. I was book smart. And, you know, I'm, I'm just a smart kid. I memorized them babies because we had a foosball table in the school. Oh, I don't know okay. if it's still there, but back in the day, we had a foosball table. I, and I, do remember, I wanted to play foosball. I do remember the foosball table, yeah. yes. Do you? I was, I, was, I, I was in the Rebecca Christian School. Actually, the, the, the girls were upstairs. It was behind the Rebecca home. And, and the elementary school was downstairs. And I remember that. See, I remember we were upstairs. I remember I remember the gym being downstairs. Now, Miss Lewis was our PE teacher, the one that got killed with Mr. Roloff. Okay. Now, Miss Lewis, she was a, a good lady. She was a loving lady, you know. she she We all loved her. I bet you can't find not one person to ever say anything bad about her, you know. She, you know, there were good people there. I don't know if when Mr. Roloff died and Miss Cameron got in charge, if she just broke or she snapped, I don't know. But the reports that I read, it's just like, oh, my God, you know. But I knew, now, 79, when at the Christian alimony, I think that was the first week of June. Now, I, left, I got home May 28, 1979, so like a week after I left, that Christian alimony happened. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know, right? So then, like '82, Mr. Roll died, so Mr. Cameron got in there. I don't. I just for me to comprehend that she did what she did, but she had to because 1985 she was charged with child abuse and and banned from working with children. Right? No, that was uh, I believe it was '99 or 2000. No, I believe. there is reports all the way back in 1985. Oh, with Miss Cameron. Oh, I have, to, yeah. I have to look that up. I read. I mean, like I said, I read a lot of, you know, because, like I said, when the girls got on there and started saying their stories, I'm like, 85. It's closed down in 79. You know. Right, but it opened. And now I do remember a couple of buses being there for emergencies. If it, they did come in. They were, you know, they had the, the kids, I don't know, the, the special pick. I don't know how the girls ended up on the bus. But when they, you know, girls went out the front, but the night before, two buses of girls left. They probably moved them. From my understanding. They probably moved them to another place. Right. They went, that's when they went from, like, state to state, kind of on the run or whatever. And after that, the home never really fully reopened. When I was there, there was 400 girls at all times. Once a bed got empty, the next day there was a, a girl right there. And there was never an empty bed. And you know, and, what's weird is 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 Lester Roloff would would take any girl, as far as whatever the problem was, he he knew that he could help her, right? Um, yeah, I've he, looked. He didn't turn his back on any girl or any race. Correct. Now, I, I've looked at the websites for the Roloff Homes now, and all they have is basically the Roloff Home for Men and the Jubilee Home. Those are the only two homes that I know of that are open still. And they also they have applications. Now, now they're not taking just anybody, all right? If you have certain problems, if you have a, a, a certain type of history with the prison system, you're not allowed. They're not taking people with mental wow. problems or diseases or anything like that. They're, they're screening everybody now. Wow. And, and then they're going to charge... That seems kind of, see, that, that seems kind of weird to me. Right. Plus, <laughs> they're going to they're gonna charge you for the, for the fees to be there. Now, see, that's another thing. A lot of girls, you know, because like I said, my mom, we didn't have electricity or food half the time. So, I know my mom couldn't send a dollar. <laughs> but... Other girls now when they got home or like when their mothers have passed, um, you know, cleaning out the house, they oh. have found receipts where their mother was, you know, sending money hmm. or donations. Donations, gifts, it, what they, they called them. Yes, they didn't send money. Let me correct that. They sent donations. So, you know, and you think about it. This is a multi-million dollar homes. Multi-million. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, we had three airplanes, runways, homes on islands, or little houses, whatever it was on the island. And um, everywhere, Mississippi, Georgia, I think he had one in Tennessee. You know, he was all, all over. 
No, I, I, never, had a, I never had a problem with Lester Roloff. I met him once. I never had a problem with him. He was always a very nice man. Right. Mr. Cameron. But you can't put your hand. beliefs, you can't force, because he was a fundamental Baptist. How are you going to force that on people? Not giving them a choice. See, that was a, that was the mistake. We wasn't given a choice. Well, they, they we seem, were forced. They seem to think that being that you've been abused or, or you're, you're in some sort of trouble, your mental state is weak. So they can infiltrate your mind and get you, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're more moldable to that. Maybe. Because, you know, like a person like me, you know, I, I wanted that little love and affection. You know, I wanted to make sure I was safe and not getting hurt. Right. So like I said, you know, it was still crazy. Don't get me wrong. It was the yes. lesser of two evils. It wasn't, I mean, when I, matter of fact, when I got home, I was almost 16. I got home in May, October. I turned 16. I got emancipated by the judge. I became a legal adult at 16. I've been paying bills ever since. I never had a childhood, ever. What, one time I got to go fishing? I worked in fields in, hot, in Texas. We worked in fields on hot days. It was hot. Oh, we were I kids. Know. I was born and raised in Corpus and, and, I don't, I don't, and I don't remember nothing to drink. I hardly ever remember anything. I remember we had a water fountain upstairs and water fountain downstairs, but we never had cops. We didn't, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, and we couldn't, it ain't like we can just come out of room at any time. I mean, at certain times we can. We, you know. So, you know, we cupped in our hands and drunk out of the faucet, you know, or sink. How, how long were you there, Barb? So almost three years. Almost three years. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And once you left, you, you, ne you didn't go back? No. no. When I first got there in 1976, I got sick, actually. Um, I was only there maybe six weeks. Six weeks, yeah, maybe. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. But I couldn't walk. I was having a lot of problems. And they flew me back to my mother, and I had a, a female procedure. Right. And I healed, and they flew me back. <laughs> back to the home. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, I did a, why I didn't run, like I said, it was a lesser to But where was I going to go? Different foster homes that I've been passed around to, some of them were bad. Some were good, but a lot of them were bad back then. The times were different. The state homes, I mean, I didn't have a choice. I was a ward of the state. I had to go somewhere. And and you, I mean, and if I had to pick a place, I, I chose that. And since you didn't know Corpus Christi at all, I mean, if you had left, you would have been probably walking the streets, you know what I mean? Homeless or something. I had no idea where I was. Right. Because, if you know, if you walked, when you walked out to go to the church or if you walked to go to the school... You didn't see nothing. No. There was no buildings around. Oh, no. Just, you know, just I was a, out nowhere. There was just and a, I'm from the, closer to the East Coast. There was just you, a, so, you know, that's a long ways from home. There was a graveyard in the in the front of the church. <laughs> see, I didn't even see that. Now, no. a, lot, a lot of girls talk about this guard shack. I don't remember a guard shack. I ain't saying it ain't there, you know, but I don't remember it. I remember it. You know? I remember it. And did, 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 was there a guard in it? Yes, there was. See? Now, I don't remember that, but many do, you know. Like, did, did, I don't know if you have you read the book written by one of our girls? No. It's called, um, oh, my gosh. I got it in my drawer. But anyway, it's, a, a lady wrote a book, and she talks about cleaning chickens and us eating chickens. I don't remember remember cleaning chickens and eating chickens. <laughs> But other girls do. So, you know, I don't know if they just, sometimes if they just picked a few girls, go do this tour or how it worked. But I don't never remember eating chicken and fish like they say we did. <laughs> like, I, I remember eating fish maybe twice out of three years. We ate a lot of, I don't even know, shoot. You know, they say we eat goat's feet. But we did eat uh. granola and oats, which that's in the same thing goats do eat. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, you know, we do, the only thing we had was go to milk or water. You know, they ain't a yeah. big choice to drink from. No, no sodas. Yeah, we had a lot of salads and a lot of fruit, but like meal meals, meat, potatoes, and vegetables, 
Never. No, no. Lester Roloff was a, a big health nut. He loved salads and fruits and vegetables. But so. that was him. That wasn't us. Well, he tried. That's where, see, that's where they get, you know, they got mixed up. You know, you're going by his beliefs. You know, how can you force somebody else's beliefs on you? You can't. No. Some, some... And many of us hated, hated church after that. We hated God. We hated the Bible. You know? That didn't break us or heal us. You caused hate in our heart. Now that we're older and we understand things, believe me, I believe in God because he helped me through a lot. You know? Am I a Rebecca survivor? No, I'm a Rebecca girl. I survived life. Yep. Which was not kind. And for, I just can't believe these other parents right now are even thinking about putting their children in these places. It just dumbfounded me. There is no way. And I think, I look at my grandson, he's 13. He'll be 13 in a few days. I, by the time I was 13, I was through so much that child wouldn't even know how to survive it, the first bit of what I've been through. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's a normal 13-year-old. I wasn't. Well. I don't know. It's a crazy time in life, I guess. It was a very crazy I don't think time. these mothers should just stop and think before they send their children to these places. Well, because you're getting ripped away. Right. Well, with the uh, the internet now, they can they they would be it would be considered careless and irresponsible if they didn't go on the internet, check the websites, see exactly uh, what's going on, make sure that the people are trained correctly. And the thing See, is, now these, there's a different thing between, now these are religious homes, they're not trained, number one. Right. There is no training. These are people that God put a burden on their heart, if whatever that means. They could be an <laughs> ex-drug addict, they could be an ex-child abuser, they could be an ex-sex offender, but now they're saved under God's name and they're a changed person. No. They're not. Right. I've always said. Whatever you think, they're not. These are human beings that were sick at one time and probably sick now. Why would you put your children in danger? I've because I tell you what. What? If somebody did, my, my, even thought about putting my child in one of them homes or doing the things that they did back then, yeah. it wouldn't be a pretty picture right now. Mm. <laughs> Believe me, because I would go in there and get my children. Oh, definitely. Break through the doors. Right through the doors. <laughs> touch one of mine. Yeah, I've always said that uh, sex know. offenders are incurable. Um, right. So why would you put your children in the name of God? I mean, this is what a lot of people don't understand. You know, because they believe in God so much. And I understand that. I mean, there is a God. But you, you can't be God. You can't judge nobody. And if your child is acting out and not doing the things that you're doing... Maybe she's wanting to tell you something that she can't get out, you know, right. out mentally or whatever. So in, And putting her in a home ain't going to do it, ripping away from her family and her, everything she knows. You can't change her. And like I said, a lot, of these, a lot of these girls, I mean, just my own personal opinion, but a lot of these girls were probably threatened with hell. You know, if you don't, if you don't change oh, your yeah. ways, you know, you're going to go to the hell. Fire, fire, Fire the and, fire and brimstone. Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. I mean that. You know, on, on our paper guy got on there and he did a little that. Oh man, I just tripped. Who are you? We know the fire and brimstone. We know it better than anybody. You know, going to hell. We lived in hell. You think we care about going to hell right now? We're living in hell. <laughs> I don't think a lot of them even cared about that part. <laughs> right. They they just. I mean, they didn't think. But they didn't think about it like that. But that's how us girls were thinking. Right. You know, we were petrified. We're little kids. We don't know if we do this, we're going to go burn up in hell. You know, we didn't know what to believe. The, you know, so is that confusion in our head. You know, all these people coming. Is it the truth? All these people are in this church saying it is. There's hundreds of people coming from all over the United States coming. <laughs> They're all saying it is. So, why so not, how did we know? Right. Yeah, so we didn't not, know no different. Why not believe it, you know? Right. You know, we didn't know no difference. 
It basically, they're, they're, it, they're not telling you to, to use your own mind and think for yourself. They want you to think like <laughs> right. they think. You know, our little saying is, we were pieces of furniture. Uh, that's what I was, you know, back in the day, we're like a piece of furniture. We did what they said. And, and some girls say, oh, you just did, you know, went by the rules and fit in and survived. Yeah, we did. What were we going to do? You know, make it rough on ourselves. Who wants to keep getting licks? Yeah, Who wants to stand for two, uh, 10 hours a day or two days? You know? Yeah. You Who to... wants to be locked up in a room? Nobody wanted them type of punishments. You had to survive any so way you could. So we did what they did. Yes. Well, yeah, we fit in for survival. Get, some girls get saved and become the good girls. We call them the good girls. Um, yeah, of course. Did And the cameras have their pets? Absolutely. Certain girls, you know, got to go out to the farm, got to go swimming. Certain girls got to do a lot more than other girls. You know? Those are the ones that... And which wasn't fair, but it was yeah. life. They followed the rules and they kissed a little butt. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> the little kick. Yes. <laughs> right. You know, so they got a little bit more special privileges. You know, I was never one of them girls. I'm not, ex <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how Cameron was uh, as far as with the girls, but... Um, now, know, Mr. Cameron, now... That, if I could say, if I had an abuser there, that would be my abuser, Mr. Cameron. I never got, like I said, I never got swats by Mrs. Cameron. I, every swat I got was from Mr. Cameron. Now, you remember I'm a 13-year-old girl, maybe 80 pounds, soaking wet. He's a grown man with a board, bent over the desk or holding the chair or whatever we did with the strength of a man giving us swats. Did he make Maybe you... you don't think it's abuse, but when you was getting them little bruised little butts, because what was it, um, black, pink bottoms, pink bottoms oh. is better than a black soul. Your pink, uh, better a pink bottom than a black soul. That's yeah. what Lester yeah. Roloff said. Yes. Yeah, many, many times. Now, and they believed that. Did, did they, did Mr. Cameron ever, when he gave you the licks or any of the girls' licks, did they make you... You know, take down your underwear, lift up your skirt, or anything like that. No, no, okay. no, no. We, but you know, we only had little polyester skirts. Oh. I mean, they were very thin anyway. Yes. Our little uniform skirts or our little culottes. I mean, they were real thin anyway. Yeah. But it wasn't a man using full force with a board. You know, just, yes. you know, it wasn't nothing nice, and some of them were ridiculous. Uncalled for swats, you know. In our opinion, I guess at the, at that time. Right. Some of the some of the stuff. Uh, yeah. Reasons... Every morning, you, oh my God! Every morning on the intercom, something about some duck, some duck song. But anyway, he woke <laughs> us up. Wakey, wakey, ducky, ducky. I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, every morning he woke up to his voice. <laughs> oh, uh, Wiley Cameron. Yes. You know Wiley Cameron. It, what's what's ironic? I think I think it's a little bit of irony here. Um, I, I listen. He, he doesn't have a lot of sermons online. I found like ten or twelve of them that I was able to catch before they were deleted. Um, but he was uh, he gave one sermon about a man on fire. He was talking about Luke sixteen with the rich man and Lazarus. If you remember that story. Uh, barely. barely, kind of, but barely. <clears throat> See, okay. I don't remember Brother Ro I mean, Mr. Cameron ever preaching, to be honest with you. Right. I mean, he's spoken like our little Bible studies and uh -huh. stuff, but like getting on behind, the it was always Mr. Roloff back then. Okay. Well, anyway, that I remember. He, uh, he died, I believe it was 2004 or five. Now, I see, I just, I just read that. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. And he, now, you're going to say... You know, you're okay. You're a man of God, and God's your protector, and the God you worship, and He's going to let you die like that. Yes, that and, was a terrific death. And like I said, the the irony of that was this sermon that he had about a man on fire, and he ends up dying with fire. Yeah, I never. Yeah, that's it's irony. I don't like ugly. So, see the God I believe in, my God, He's a good God. He's a loving God, and he's a caring God. You know, he's my God, and me and him got a relationship. 
I don't go to church. I can't go to church. If I go to church, I have anxiety so bad I almost pass out. Anxiety, you know. Yes. Um, and I ain't gonna, and and I ain't gonna lie. I'm on medication for anxiety. You know, right. I, it's, it's just I can't do it. So I got my own relationship with him. Do I believe I'm a Christian? Yes. Do I believe I'm going to heaven? Yes. You know, you can't tell me because what this or that. You know, I'm going to go to hell, on fire and brimstone, get burned up. And that, that's but the, see, look, look who got burned up. Right. <laughs> and that's the problem. That's the problem with the churches today. You know, if you ever want to know what's wrong with the first Baptist church, just go to the second Baptist church, and they'll tell you exactly <laughs> what's wrong with the first Baptist. They they don't work together. Everybody is out for themselves. They have the truth. The other church does not. And that's the problem. Right. They believe their way, and their way is the only way. Right. Exactly. And, you know, Roloff was the same way. He would talk about Catholics and, and, and everything else. And, of course, I'm sure the Catholics would say something about the Baptists. It's, that's, right. That's, that's life. So, that's you how know, it goes. Yeah. It's just like politics. It's, you know, what you believe. You just can't force it on people. You know, if there was a home and you, you know, if there's a home and you give them the option to go to church, mm -hmm. that's a whole different thing. You never know. You probably probably got more girls loving God and becoming Christians that way. Besides saying, hey, 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 you do this, you do this. And so, you know, we're going to rebel against it. You know, I've, I've always said, instead of whipping them, I mean... Yes, sometimes spankings are n necessary, uh, but sometimes just sitting down and talking with them and telling them what they did wrong, you know what I mean? Just giving, right. them, giving them some some love and affection that way and say, look, you know, you did this, this is wrong, don't do it anymore. You know what I mean? But, but they, their, their, their wrongs were so crazy. Like I said, meeting in the eyes. You go to church and look to the left, you don't know if you're coming back going to get the swats or not. Right. I mean, maybe you turned and didn't even really look, you know? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, I mean, you got punished sometimes for nothing. And when one person, and a lot of times, when one person did something, we all got punished. I've heard that You know, before. many times we got punished for other girls' things. You know, that was crazy. And, and sometimes that makes the girls turn on each other. And then, right. Because, you know, we're in there for survival. No matter what, stay home, group home, uh, religious home. We're there for survival. You know, that's just the way of life. No, no. And we, we did. See, I mean, saying that we turned on each other because our group of girls, we were pretty close. I mean, if anything, when I was seen the Habitat's house and, and read that I and watched Living in Sin, I watched some girls, I cried because I remember in our Bibles, we always wrote each other's names. And phone uh -huh. numbers. And we always promised if whoever got out would call each other's parents. You know what I'm saying? Yes. We, you know, that was a promise, a pact. We made that pact, you know. And like I said, I thought the home got shut down because I left. And I, the Christian alimony came. I didn't know it reopened. But I cried because I'm, I broke my promise to my friends back then. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I didn't help them. I left them there. And I didn't know that I left them there. Right. You know, and it really messed with me, and it hurt me. And um, <clears throat> I, I just left my friends in a horrible place. Do you, do you talk to but them? But at the same time, when I did come home, and when I did try to tell people, nobody would even believe the stories I was saying. Who would give it, even though you got a kid coming home saying, hey, I stood for three days, you know? And you know a, who, nobody's going to believe right, that. Because they're going to say, oh, well, you were in a Christian, a Christian home. They wouldn't do that to you. Right. I know, I know they took this girl's baby. Who's going to believe that? You know, they, everybody just made me think, feel like I was more crazy. But these things were really happening. Yeah. It's a shame. It's a damn shame. Yeah. So then I, I, when I did do my little research thing, now the way I'm understanding it, Brother Cameron, mm -hmm. now, uh, after the federal government came in, it, it, the way, now, I might be wrong, but it's like 85 or something when Miss Cameron got charged. The home had to close for a while, then it reopened. Right. But somehow in 1999, him and Mr. Bush were friends. And they, they got Miss George, the president, put in the law, I think it was in 2001 now, 
where the, the the state and religion can some type of law is put in there. Right. And, and on the board of this Christian laws for the White House or whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. Anyway, Mr. Cameron was head of it. So only thing I can think is Mr. Dr. Fields even made a comment. I there's nothing we can do. You know, this you know, stay against religion. Our hands are tied. You know, you know, I'm thinking there is something we can do. We gotta go back in there and change that law. I mean they had the law be, it stopped them before. There's gotta be something that can stop these people opening these homes up under the God or church, or what religion, whatever you want to say, and taking these kids in. Because they ain't they're not monitor homes. And like you said, and I, I feel in my heart, these homes ain't inspected and these girls now that what is it, the new Bethany home? Uh, if you hear their story. Not yet. Some of them girls' stories. You know? That yeah. that home was a, a a very torturous home. Them girls got hurt. You know, just like in the habitat. Who, who says it's okay to lay on you on the ground and have four people hold you, put a chair on your head and to get lit, licks? Oh, man. That's not normal. No, that's abuse. Right. That's not normal nowadays. Maybe it was in the 60s, the 70s. This is 2020. You cannot put your hands on another person's child. They will go to prison for this. Yes. And then you, but you're not going to prison because you're under God's name? Well, that's, that's, don't make sense. that's what happened when Roloff uh, was fighting with the state over the license. He said, right. he says, uh, I have a license from God to run these homes. Now, yeah. the only way that these states, I believe, the only way these states are going to shut down these homes is to make them get a license. Arizona, Florida are not requiring license licenses for Why? these homes. That's the problem. They get the they 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 pass a law that says you need to have a license. They're going to shut the homes down. It's that simple. And and at least have somebody. Well, and number one, you've got to have somebody in place to help these children nowadays. You know, because the world's different. And if you're going to take in these children that are are hurt, confused, mixed up, whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. rebelling against God, however you want to say it, these children need help. You might need a counselor, some children might need counselors. Some might yes. need medical attention, you know. Some might need mental attention. Well, see, you just can't take a group of girls and give them to a man and say, raise my children. Right, and the reason why Roloff needed a license was because he was running a home for teenage girls. Now, the Roloff homes now, the men's home and the Jubilee homes, they've covered their ass, so to speak. They're not bringing in teenagers anymore. They're bringing in adults. Okay? So, when you bring in adults... Well, an adult, you, can, an adult can make their own decision. Exactly. So, you don't have oh, to have a right. license. Right. They can make their own decision. A child can't. Right. I mean, there were girls there younger than me. I mean, I remember girls being as little as nine years old. I right. mean, there were some little girls in there, too. But, but that's, you know? that's why they're not bringing in teenagers anymore. They're bringing in adults. That way, they don't have to have a license. Because that's who they, he, they attacked so much with him was the Rebecca home. Right. It wasn't all the other homes. They didn't, they didn't really care too much about the other homes. But they wanted into the Rebecca home. Well, so, and that was because when girls were leaving there, they were telling their parents what was happening. Yes. You know, and parents were making reports. And they, you know, and that he banded, he wouldn't let DCFS in or nobody come in to check on these girls and see if they were okay. No, I'm, I'm sure the Anchor Home and the Lighthouse Home had some horror stories, too. So. I guess. I read some of nurse, too. Yes. I mean, they were boys. It seems like they got it maybe a little... Well... You know? Yeah. I mean, I heard one, you know, one, you know it was in the court papers, the little boy that broke both ankles. They made him dig in a ditch, made him jump or something. He ended up breaking both ankles. Yes, I heard I mean, that. yeah. I mean, there's just a lot... I mean, they did. You do work out. You do work. When he said we grew our own food, we worked in them high ass fields. Believe me, many days. We, like you know, like I said, I was, corn, beans, you know, watermelons. 
Yes, bugs and Without everything else. Hours in the sun. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I grew up in Corpus Christi. I know how hot it was. It was hot. <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> I remember it being really hot. <laughs> yes, nineties, one hundreds. Yes, it was hot. <laughs> so. You know. Yes. And I don't remember like us having drinks or nothing out there. And you, but you know. No iced tea. No water. No we nothing. Did. But I'm, I'm sure it was a privilege, though, to have drinks yeah. out there. It was a privilege to go work. You know, it ain't like we didn't jump up and say we didn't want to go work. Who wants to go work? Shoot. You know, they got us outside. Got it. Then, you know, when you got outside, you kind of got away from people. You might have one or two little friends, you know, you can little talk. You know, or a little private conversations. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so. There's no intercom. You know, it, it ain't. No intercom. <laughs> right. <laughs> No intercom. So, you, were you allowed to make friends at the Rebecca home? You know, I mean, because it seemed like when you started getting, it depends what friend you had. Let's put it that way. Because okay. if you got a good girl for a friend, you didn't have no problems. But if you were just an average girl, just wanting to hang with another average, you know, girl, mm -hmm. they try to separate you. I remember moving a couple of times. I think I, I had at least, I remember three rooms. And I always wonder why they moved us around. You know, they really, no, they didn't let us get, if we, they thought we was getting too close to someone, they yes. kind of separated us. Okay. You know, I don't know why or the, the purpose of that was. But, yeah, we wasn't really allowed to have real close friends. That's... And most girls stayed a year. You know, like I said, a lot went home on their six-month visit. Okay. But I just happened didn't didn't get to go home, and I never dreamed in a million years that I wouldn't see my family again for three years when I walked through that door. And the craziness I lived on top of the life I was already living. Now you're right. That was hell. Yeah. Hell on earth. It was different. You know, so. it ain't much different than prison. You know, if you think about it, if I think about it, and I look at it now. No, uh -huh. it ain't too much different. You know, you got to sign rooms. You're behind a fence. You go to school. I mean, you did you what to do. Yeah, but in prison, there's a little more luxuries. You have TV. You have <laughs> right. We had no TV, no radio, no no. Only books we had was like Christian books. No outside books. No outside magazines. We was cut off from the world completely. Well, there was the only thing we knew yeah. was the King James, King James James, book the King James book you had, version. really. There was a, a book that was written uh, actually by Roloff's wife, Marie Brady Roloff, and it was called Living by Faith. Um, I've, I found the book on Amazon, but I am not going to pay $140 for this book. My God. Uh, they're selling this book for $140. I mean, I mean, sort of, I think. Because it had living on faith, my faith on the phone. Yes. It had his face on yes. it? Yes. 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 Because, believe it or not, one of the girls just found one at a thrift shop for a quarter. Oh. And she posted a picture of it. She's like you ain't this is before the shutdown thing. But she uh she found it at a thrift shop for a quarter and she posted it up there because she didn't know nothing about it. Oh. But it had Mr. Roloff's face on it. I think it was only like thirty three pages. It oh. wasn't very long. But right, I'm, the girl, the the book that the the Rebecca girl wrote. It's a short story book, sort of too. Do you know what the title is? You know, so. Yeah, let me, I'm going to get it. Um, her, her, she got a ghost name. It's Maggie Savage. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, you know, we do, it's called Rebecca for Broken Children. I'm, just, I'm sorry, say, it, say that again. Rebecca, what? Islam, is that that word, Jamie? What's the A word? Asylum. That's it. Rebecca Asylum for Broken Children. Okay. It's by Maggie. 
I I bought it off Amazon just because, you know, the girl, you know, I just wanted to read her story. Uh-huh. And it's a pretty accurate. I mean, it's got some messed up little things, but it's her, her memories. You know, a lot of us, like I said, we got bits and pieces of memories. And, and like I said... But the films... Yes, the films. The films, the dance, you know, where are these films? You know, if he's supposed to be this great person and this big God man and the, their idol, where are these films in this church? They're hidden. They're with all of us girls. They're hidden somewhere. Right. They're supposed to be well, over 100 copies circulated of each film. Somebody's got these films that saying that they can't find. Maybe it's got because some. Because that got us all on there. Well, oh. you know, I'm in like one of them back to Bedford. For... Yes, back to Bedford. Uh, John Bunyan or something. John Bunyan. Yes. Yeah. Then after that was the one, My Little Murderers. I mean, I don't remember the title of the film, but you know that's what we called it uh-huh. because that's what you know was the the theme of it. You know, then there was one before that. I watched, but I can't really remember too much about it. It was about the, more about, the, I think, the boys. Okay. You know, but where did all these films, I mean, if you, all these people got all these questions, show them. You got the evidence of really what was happening because it's filmed. Well, maybe they just don't want the world to see it because that might uh, give uh, Brother Roloff uh, a bad name. People might look... Might not think he was such a great... I don't know if it would give him a bad name, but it would definitely show the truth. That's not what they want out right now. They don't want the truth out. <laughs> well, that's what needs to come out. <laughs> yes, you're right. That's you what know, needs to come out. Somehow or another, we these other parents about these homes. You know, that's all there is to it. I mean, because you're going to get on this internet and you're looking... Like, cause you said they're the ones that under, are only for adults, but like the Jack one that shut down in Alabama, it actually had children in it. Yes. And that, yes. you know, the New Bethany, that's got children in it. The Habitat, that's got children in it. Now, all three of them have been closed down to extreme abuse. You know, so there's still others out there that we probably don't even know about. The people haven't come out yet. Right, well, that haven't come out yet. You know, so right. somehow or another, it's just the the words just got to get out there and stop the child abuse. And like I said, this Period. is this is the reason, Barb, that I do this. That way, when people are thinking of sending their kids to a, a home, they can look at both sides of the coin. Okay, their website has all these wonderful reviews on how great this place is, but then you come over to this side and it shows all the horror stories and all the bad things that happened. You know what I mean? They're not gonna tell. Right. They're not gonna tell you on their website that they whip the kids all the time, or, or they make. Yeah, them they're stand. not gonna say we're gonna beat your kids with a board. Right, in the name of God or something. You know? They're not gonna say that. Right. So it's it's, right. it's being that the internet has a lot of information. They they should be able to find good reviews and bad reviews and make a, an intelligent decision, an informed decision, a smart decision. Right. You know, as to whether to send their kids there or not. So, and like I said, there might right, be... Right, and I pray to God that any mother that is thinking about this, please reconsider your decision and think about it hard because there is nobody that can love your child more than you. Yes, and like I said, with, if they're going to send their kids to, to Rebecca, they might go on YouTube and they're going to see this podcast and they're going to listen to it and go, well, you know what, maybe, maybe we should uh, look at other places. You know what I mean? Something that's... I mean, I, I wouldn't send my or, kids to a home. You know. Yeah. Not at all. Well, especially you're, you're looking at, like I said, nowadays you're looking at whoever, if you turn into a Christian, is right doing these homes. You don't know this person's background that you're sending your child to. Exactly. Like you said, it's it's God told them to do it, so they're doing it. They could have absolutely no right. experience with kids at all. <laughs> no experience. None. Apparently, your Mrs. Cameron didn't have experience because she whacked out and, and <laughs> did whatever she did to them girls. Because some of them, some of them stories isn't nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I think back. I ain't gonna lie. I think back now. I look at man. She was just a little, little tiny woman. 
You know what I mean? How in the world did it turn out to be like that? I have no idea. I never met her, but um, I heard that she was mean. See? I can't say I've ever seen a mean bone in her. Ever. Hmm. I can't even say we spoke, really, by maybe Cameron. But other than that, you know, I, you know that's, what, that's what amazes me. So what made her turn like that? You know, maybe just having all the girls and she couldn't do it. Couldn't handle it, or she just couldn't uh, handle it. Maybe just caught the devil or something. Uh, you know, <laughs> right? They say we caught God. You, know, you never know. That's you know, there. <laughs> that was the whole purpose of the Rebecca home was to beat the devil out of you. If you wore right. pa- if you wore pants, beat it on us and put it in her. <laughs> that's right. If you if you wore pants, if you if you watched TV, if you uh, you know smoked or drank, you were you had right. the devil in you. And that's how they believed. Yep. And they were they're gonna try yep. their hardest to, to to beat that devil right out of you. <laughs> yes. So and they then they tried very hard to beat it out of it. Some conformed you know? some conformed to it and some didn't. And the ones that did not right. were the ones that got it the worst. Right. <laughs> now like I got a friend that she was my friend there and we're still kind of friends on Facebook and through our group. Uh-huh. You know? She, she had, she, all things she can remember is good, loved it there. But again, she, got, you know, was one of the girls that went to the farm, got to go swimming, play softball. You know, she got to, she was in the little, special little group. It was she right. got to leave. Oh, she got to leave? That I left three times in three years. Wow. Austin, Dallas, and to the, the little fishing thing. Okay. Other than that, I never left. Oh, you you went. Uh, were you were you singing in the in any quartets or anything or? No, oh, no. I can't sing. Okay. I'm worse than Miss Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did but you? But I was in the choir. I go. You, I you, you know we all were in the choir yes. at one time. You you did hear Miss Cameron They're sing. Not. Yeah. Wow. But um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but no, I was not in no court, and really none of them could sing, if you ask me, no. if you even listen to the quartet, <laughs> but uh, they bless their hearts, they tried, Yes. but I remember being like when them, Back to Bedford was funny in the film, I'm in the choir there, that's, you know, when you see me, because when I'm right behind, you know, kind of by them, but, yeah. um, oh, right by Lester Wolof, yeah, 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 but, um, yeah, we all, no, I didn't do none of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Barb, it's been... It's and a lot been, of girls got to travel yeah. that way, though. Oh, did they? They, they sung, and they did have a good voice. They got to travel, because then you got to go to the revivals to sing, you know, and you got to go to different churches, and, you know, and stuff like that. Right. We got to get, get out away from the Rebecca home and, and have, maybe have, right. a, have a little fun. Yes. Right. So, yeah, girls really, you know, I don't know if it's because they found, you know, so-called found God or just want a little bit of freedom. Maybe both. But like I said, it was a survival, so you did what you did to survive. Yeah. All right, Barb. Thank you for coming on. This was a great, great discussion. I really appreciate it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for having me. You're welcome. And like I said, everyone that's, right. you know, when people, when people listen to this, you know, hopefully they can make the right decision. You know, even though, hopefully, even though, you know, you were there during the seventies, it, it's, it's still happening today. Like you said. So. Right. And, and times have changed and they have changed greatly. Yes. You know, and, and the world ain't a nice place and to send your kids off somewhere, please reconsider it. Yeah, exactly. All right, Barb. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. You take care of yourself, mm-hmm. okay? All right. You too. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. I hope everybody enjoyed our discussion with Barb today. Just a reminder, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can hear more of these stories. So, we will see you next time. For the Hammer Podcast, I'm Jason. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other.